What's up everybody, it's John from Awe of Tech coming at you today with an awesome video. Not only am I gonna give you an overview of this amazing new add-in board partner, GTX 1080 Ti, this one from Gigabyte Aorus, I also want to do its benchmarking in both the Ryzen 7 CPU as well as the Intel i7-6700K. So, before jumping right into the benchmarks to see if Ryzen 7 is a bottleneck for the GTX 1080 Ti, if so, to what extent, relative to the Intel i7. So first, a quick breakdown of the Aorus Gigabyte GTX 1080 Ti 11 Gigabyte G5X memory, amazing graphics card with many marked improvements over the reference model and at nearly the same asking price, making this brand new release hard to pass up on. So be sure to check the links and deals in the description box down below. The GPU in all the 1080 Ti's boasts an incredible 3584 CUDA cores, as well as 11 gigabytes of the new G5X memory from Micron that's advertised as 10% faster than the former gddr 5 x memory from Micron. So just amazing. You will immediately notice the triple fan cooling system. They're actually staggered with the fan behind the top to keep the length of this card in line at 293 millimeters versus the 267 millimeter of the Founders Edition. And the bottom 100 millimeter fan actually spins in the opposite direction, giving amazing heat dissipation. The design is really good, the build really rigid, and the included metal backplate is a nice touch, being very sturdy with its own Aorus design on it. The advertised clock speeds come in at a base of 1594 and boost to 1708 MHz in OC mode. This is actually the minimum, and dependent on the ASIC quality of the actual chip, the cooling PCB power phase design allow for much greater potential. The card sports an impressive 12 plus to power phase design, ready for extreme overclocking with reduced MOSFET temperature, stable voltage output. My card easily boosted to a sustained 1950 MHz while gaming right out of the box with just gaming mode enabled. The card does require two 8 pins for power delivery, although Aorus includes a dual 6 pin to 8 pin adapter if your power supply only has a 6 and 8 pin PCI power cable. And all of this performance from Aorus with cool temperatures at a max of 75 degrees Celsius, idle at 38 degrees, and a 58 degrees Celsius average while gaming. So that is well away from hitting the thermal ceiling. Thanks to the awesome cooling design, the heat sink large, massive copper heat pipes throughout, and a massive copper base plate really aid in keeping this chip as cool as possible with excellent heat transfer to the heat sink. The card physically has a lot of depth to it, being a triple slot card, but even so, I only had to remove two PCI backplates in my case. You can still fit an additional card for SLI, but space is really tight. It includes RGB fusion lighting in three locations, the side Aorus logo, fan stop, and the shroud above the fans. And connectivity is quite abundant with three DisplayPort 1.4s. Love this for multi-monitor setup. And there's two more HDMI 2.0B connections in the back, and there's a dual link DVI-D. And on the other side, there's actually an internal HDMI port. So enough of admiring this card. Let's get straight into the benchmarks, guys. This is for 1080p, 1440p, as well as 4K gaming. Unless otherwise noted, I Set the graphics quality to the highest preset turn vsync off so i use two systems you can check the specifications in the description box down below for the full system configurations the ryzen system using an octal air cooler and the ryzen 7 1700 clocked at 4 gigahertz in the fantex p400 case with two 8 gigabyte sticks for 16 gigabytes of ddr4 3200 megahertz random access memory from golden emperor international and really important to note is i kept the ram timings as well as the frequency the same in both systems so that is cast latency of 16 18 18 36 and the intel system with the i7 6700k clocked at 4.4 gigahertz so at the time of filming this video, both the Ryzen 1700 and Intel 6700K are going for $319 on Amazon. Although the most recent release, the Intel i7-7700K fetches $345 and has some refinements that do yield higher overclocks. The clock speeds for this video are simply the highest I could achieve with stability, so your mileage may vary. So starting off with a benchmark a lot are familiar with, 3D Mark Firestrike Ultra. Graphics score near identical, just over 7,000 for both. And the physics score, this is a test that runs 32 parallel simulations on the CPU. And here, as you might expect, the 8 core 16 thread of Ryzen 7 pulled way ahead here with a score of near 21,000. For the total score, the Ryzen system edges out the Intel system. And here are the respective FPS averages for the test run in this benchmark. And now for 3D Mark Time Spy, a DirectX 12 benchmark with native support for the new API, features like asynchronous compute, explicit multi adapter, and multi threading. Graphic score, the tests rendered at 1440p are both near 10,000, thanks to the incredible GTX 1080 Ti. And now for the CPU score, this test quite demanding on the processor, and thanks to the multi thread and raw computational capabilities, Ryzen comes out way in front here with a score 50% higher than the Intel system and also gives it the win for the total score. And here's the respective FPS averages in the test 
best within this benchmark. And now for Batman Arkham Knight, we see incredible performance all round with a 1080 Ti, 4K results near identical, 1440p quite close, and that 1080p has either system ready to take advantage of a 144Hz display. And moving on to Rise of the Tomb Raider, this benchmark divided into three different parts for the different scenes. In the Geothermal Valley at the 4K resolution, both AMD and the Intel system with a 60 or greater FPS average at 1440p, both around 100 FPS average, and Team Blue pulls ahead at 1080p with a 131 FPS average versus the red team's 101 average FPS. And in the Mountain Peak, the results nearly the same between both systems, near 80 FPS at 4K over 140 FPS at 1440p, and both over 200 frames per second at that 1080p resolution. And now moving on to Shadow of Mordor, with both systems over 100 FPS at 4K, over 200 FPS at 1440p, and above 200 FPS at 1080p. That's some blistering frames outputted in all resolutions. Okay, now the division at 4K, both around 60 FPS, 100 FPS at 1440p, and well over 100 frames per second at 1080p. So interestingly, the division's in-game benchmark provides analysis of the average CPU and GPU utilization, and we find the GTX 1080 Ti near 100% as expected, but the AMD system really shines here, with the Intel i7 requiring over 50% greater utilization in order to achieve the same average FPS as Ryzen. And a similar story is apparent at 1440p and 1080p. And now for Tom Clancy's recent release, Ghost Recon Wildlands, with just marginally higher FPS for Intel, the performance near identical across both systems and all resolutions, and like the Division Ghost Recon's benchmark, gives us even further analysis at the behind the scenes work required from both the CPU and GPU. GPU. Graphics near 100% across the board, however the Intel i7 is again significantly more heavily taxed, yet with poor scaling correlated to the performance gain. So it's really nice to see more CPU headroom out of the Ryzen system as development and game optimization continue, and of course as graphics offer us even more down the road. And that's all I have for today's video and review of the Aorus GTX 1080 Ti with both the AMD Ryzen 7 and Intel i7. So be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos, thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, comment if you have a comment down below and stay tuned for my full review of Ryzen 5. It's been awesome. Can't wait to catch you guys in the next video.